All right, everyone. Uh, I would now like to talk about uh, categorical bivariate data. So we've looked at bivariate data for quantitative data. Uh, you're kind of seeing some of the leftovers of that last talk here. Um, where we're talking about regression lines and uh, correlation coefficients, all that stuff. We're not going to use those notions here um, because we're not working with quantitative data anymore. We're working with categorical data. And when you're working with categorical data, the natural approach to categorical data is to look at counts for categories. And not just for categories, but for uh, intersections of categories where individuals have both one and another um well, where individuals are taking combinations of uh, possible values for the for two or more variables uh, in your data set. Uh, so if we want to construct uh, tables that contain the counts for uh, combinations of uh, uh, combinations of possible values for your variables, like maybe we have, well, a classic example is the Titanic data set. So this Titanic data set is basically a cross tabulation of um, the individuals of the Titanic and tracking their sex, their class, their age, and their survival status. So it's each one of these numbers corresponds to how many individuals fell into that particular intersection of these variables. So, for example, this is the number of female second-class adults who did not survive. Okay, so uh, that's how we would think about that. So we could have... I mean, you could almost restrict this thing of this as being a subtable consisting only of children who didn't survive, and this would be then a cross tab of their sex and their class. Uh, cross tabs are are often of great interest to statisticians and um, and uh, people who are just using data. Um, anyone who's interested in data often is uh, interested in the cross tabs. So we can construct cross tabs with the x tabs function, which should make sense because it's x because x is a cross cross tabs. So uh, we can do something along the lines of x tabs tilde x plus y. So this is the uh, ver the uh, formula interface that I was talking about earlier. Uh, data equals d, and this will construct a table that well. This will basically construct a two way uh, table tracking how many individuals. Uh, fell into combinations of variable of uh, values for x and y, and you can go beyond two variables. You could go to three variables and so on. Uh, if you're going to have multiple variables in your data set that you're cross tabulating in a sense, um, then you probably need to have a better way to look at what's in the table than something like this. Uh, something like this over here. There is actually a function called ftable that is meant for viewing the information in tables in a more legible format. Uh, so if we save the results of earlier calls to X tabs, uh, if we saved in a variable called tab, we could use the function call, um, uh, we could use the function called F table. Here's our, our, our resulting cross tab table. And we identify which variables will be the row variables and which variables will be the column variables. Um, so in other words, well, actually, we'll see. I'll show you an example in a second of what how exactly we should interpret that. Um, let's create a cross tabulation of uh, cars in the Cars 93 data set uh, where we're tracking origin and type. So if we were to type in tab one, uh, we'd say, okay, uh, there were seven American compact cars, 11 large compact cars, zero non-American large compact cars, and so on. Uh, so there's a simple cross-tabulation for us. Uh, that's a two-way table. We could create a three-way table like so. And then when we print the table, this is what we see. The unfortunate thing, though, is that this table is extremely hard to read because we should read this as there were... Um, three cars that were non-American, small, and had three cylinders. And zero cars that were American and had three cylinders. That's how we should read this, and it's kind of a pain to read it that way. So we could use instead the ftable function to try to um, result, uh, try to get a better looking table, basically. So we could have, a, so using this uh, ftable function, I can say, all right, 
the row variables will be um, the second variable. If we were to, uh, let's see, how should we read this? So variable one corresponds to, to row, so that's going to be origin. So I'm saying that um, uh, the row variables will be... Um, uh well okay so the row so the column variables will be one and three so that means that origin is going to be a column variable as we see here um and uh the second variable was the type so that will be a row variable and the third variable was the number of cylinders and that's also going to be a column variable and when you uh do that it ends up coming up with uh kind of these side by side tables right uh, rather than something this so that's just so spread out like this. Uh, here's a four-way table where we're tracking origin type cylinder and whether it the car has a manual transition available. And here is a cross tab. Here's a cross tab table where we're tracking where we say okay, so variables two and four will be the row variables. So those are going to be type and manual transition. Um, uh, the other variables, 1 and 3, will be column variables. So that's going to correspond to origin and cylinders. Okay. So you can make the you can use F table to come up with more uh, readable tables. Okay. Uh, now, when faced at a table, you kind of want to... You often want to know what the marginal distributions are. So in other words, it's nice to know um, that there were... Um, there, that there's one American mid-sized car with eight cylinders that's nice but it'd also just be no nice to know if you have a table like this how many mid-sized cars there were in the entire data set that would be something that you would determine from a margin of the table where you're looking at a particular margin um if we were to imagine that well i guess you could make the same argument even if you imagined what i'm circling right here is the entire data set Right, you still want to be able to say, all right, I want to just know how many American and non-American cars there were in this uh, in this sample, or how many compact cars there were, how many large cars there were, regardless of the whether the car was American or not. And for that type of information, you want to compute the margins of your table. And for that, you should use the margin table function. And for the margin table function, you, you feed it your table that you came up with using X tabs, and then you tell it which margin you want to sum. So for tab three, that's going to be uh, this table right here where we had four variables. And if I want to know basically how many, uh, like what the counts were just for, what was the first variable in this data set? Um, origin. If I want to know just the counts for each possible value of origin, then I would want a, mar uh, a margin, uh, I would want a margin sum over the first uh, dimension. And in this case, we'll get, all right, there were 48 American and 45 non-American cars. If I want margin two, which corresponds to uh, the type of car, if I want to know just like the counts for each possible type, uh, I'm going to use margin table and say margin equals two. So now I get counts for each type. And then I can do the same thing for uh, cylinders and so on. Now let's suppose we want to visualize the information that's in a two-way table. Uh, one way we could do this is with a stack bar plot. Um, visualization experts are actually not that big a fan of stack bar plots. Uh, the reason why being they don't like this stacking part. Uh, when you're stacking uh, bars like this, it makes... I mean, you can compare the bottom bars, but it's hard to compare the top bars. Like, whether this bar or this bar... Like, this bar or this bar, I I can tell that one is larger than the other. But also, if you wanted to figure out what the date... What the, the actual value for this bar was, that would be rather difficult because you have to do subtraction. You have to do this minus this um, in order to be able to figure out how high this bar is. So visualization experts are not necessarily fans of stacked bar plots. They would prefer bar plots that are just kept close together, side by side. Uh, proximity is a good way to indicate to the eye that two variables are related to each other. This would be a more readable plot. Uh, and this is also containing similar information. You can still kind of see, like, there are no uh, um, uh, non-American large cards. You can see uh, that vans tend to be um, that that vans tend to be rarer, but 
there's uh, more American vans than non-American vans, and so on. You can still kind of get that information. You can see, you can still see that uh, small cars, American small cars, are common enough, but not particularly common. Whereas they're extremely common for European cars or non-American cars, not necessarily European. Uh, so a bar plot is one way to visualize the relationships amongst these variables. Another possibility is a mosaic plot. This is a bit more of an exotic plot. Um, so what you have is what you're plotting is a frequency combination uh, is the is the frequency of each combination of the variables in the data set and the result and the plot will represent the size of a combination or the number of observations that fell for fell in for each combination via the size of rectangles. So here is a mosaic plot for the version of the table where we had um, just American versus non-American. And the area of these, of, these, uh, of these rectangles correspond or is proportional to the number of uh, data points that fell into that combination of categories. We get a dash right here to indicate that there is a group that had a count of zero. In this case, that would be the large cars, large non-American cars. They get a dash to basically say, all right, they're, like, they're around, but there's there were none of them, but that was a group. Uh, if we go to tab two, uh, this is a little bit harder to read. Um, but now we have an additional variable, so we would also be tracking the origin of the cars, and we can then do also tab three, which has four variables in it, uh, even harder to read, and mo most of this is now dashes because most groups have uh, zero counts. But this is another way to potentially create a visualization, try to understand the relationships um, amongst these categorical variables. All right, so that concludes uh, this discussion on uh, um, bivariate data. And uh, in the next lecture, uh, we'll be talking about uh, inferential statistics via computation. So that's like simulation and uh, using bootstrapping for coming up with confidence intervals and, and stuff like that. So uh, just seeing some computational methods for uh, inferential statistics that, um, that are actually quite robust and useful. So I'll see you there. And until then, have a good day.